So, um, so the last two times that we have sat together, we have picked up fear and teacher. When I look at both of these in on one frame, I can see that both of them are ideas. And as we had uh, discussions about these ideas, we also gradually unfolded the fact that these ideas have had a certain lifetime. They have traveled. So today I want to pick up another idea. I would want to historically contextualize it and I would want both of us to look at this idea together and try to explore how it has developed, how it has gradually become something else and in this historical method I would try to question the idea in itself. So the idea that we have, I have uh, decided to talk about today is work, work. So in our common parlance, there is a certain way in which this idea is, is talked about. There is a certain attitude that we have about this idea. So let me, let me give you an example. If I am playing cricket in a ground and somebody calls me up and asks me, what are you doing? I can't say, I can, I can say anything, but I can't say I am working. And in contrast to this, if I am sitting in my room doing my homework, which is going to produce a particular end in the class tomorrow, then I can easily say that I am working. So this idea, I would also con contextualize this historically, but today in our in 21st century, the way this idea is adopted, the way it is being talked about, this one thing is common, that work is something with, with for which you have to exert yourself. There is a certain physical, mental activity, but activity not of any kind, right? Activity which will produce a particular end. So you and I are talking talking now and had, had this camera not been here, we could have not confidently said that we are working, right? People sit in their rooms and they talk at length about topics. They can't say that they are working. However, if, if a camera is being put there and the same discussion is being uploaded on YouTube and it serves a particular purpose for those discussions, they can claim that they were working. So work, I'm not saying that this is, this is the established idea. Yes, it is certainly established in the sense that it is prevalent today, right? So work, a certain kind of activity which is a means to an end which is a means to an end now after having said this let me try to contextualize the whole idea of work so when i think about this work so being a literature student i read this christian doctrine this biblical myth about adam and eve so let me go back almost 6000 years 3900 bc so Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden and God has said unto Adam that the entire existence is there to serve you, okay, enjoy yourself, do everything that you wish to, just don't do one thing. You all know what that thing is, which is prohibited. God says, God has said to Adam, do everything but just don't eat this apple, right? This is a forbidden fruit. And you all know the, the story, then sub, the, sub, the Satan Lucifer steps in, he, he uh, convinces uh, Eve, Eve convinces Adam and so on and so forth. The result, the outcome is that that God, the Father, has has now Adam and Eve standing in front of him and God says, See, you have done what I didn't what I told you to not to do. And now there has to be a punishment, right? And there's a punishment that is given to Adam. And very interestingly, that punishment that is given to Adam is that now he'll have to work. Now he will have to work. Earlier there was no need to work. The existence was there to serve him, right? If he wanted food, food was available. If he wanted water, water was available. Everything was available. Now, since that Adam has sinned, and this is the original sin, since that Adam has sinned, God has informed, God is informing Adam that do now you'll have to work. Now you'll have to earn your livelihood. And God says to Adam, and I'm quoting, that by by the sweat of your bro, by the sweat of your bro, you will have to earn your food until you return to the ground. And this is very interesting. So this is one particular definition of what work is. Work is by definition miserable. Work is by definition something you are not interested in. Work is by definition... Repeat that. 
Repeat, which, repeat what? By the sweat of your brow. By the sweat. Okay, I'll quote it. I'll quote it in as many words. It says, "By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food. By the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground." So God has said this to Adam, and Adam is of course not very happy. God says, "Do this for nine thirty years. Nine thirty years. Your life is of nine thirty years, and you are doomed to do this." So work. What are the key points that we have touched upon? Work is something which is a kind of a punishment. It has been commanded upon you. Never really wanted to do it. It is by definition miserable, and it you are doing it for somebody. You are not doing it for yourself. You are doing for somebody, and it is miserable. Now Adam has started working, and we are, as we all know, the succeeders of Adam. So Adam has started working. Adam works, and interestingly, it is work which distinguishes. the life in paradise from the world we know today the life in the life of paradise there was no work and when then the paradise got lost and then work stepped in stepped on to earth now let me let me shift let me take a big leap and come to saint augustine 3 396 ad the bishop of hippo now what he does is after so these many years what he does is he resurrects this idea uh, orthodox christianity catholicism he says see the what what the sin that adam has committed we will have to pay for it and he says and i'm quoting from this cup of sorrow no one will be excused from this cup of sorrow no one will be excused the cup the cup that adam has pledged will have to be drunk must be drunk so again the same idea that that you will have to be you have to work and you have to work for a particular end work is by definition miserable you know never really wanted to do it but since you have committed a sin and god has punished you you will have to do it okay there is a reward but only afterwards only you have oh, after you have died so if you want if you want to if you want uh, a compensation okay when you will die you will go to heaven right as we have today you work from 1st to 30th and on the first of the next month you get your salary so work by definition is miserable work by definition is something that you never really ever wanted to do it is kind of a commandment that has been uh, enforced into you from some authority now as time has progressed as as time progresses this 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 idea of work also changes now we have come to 12th century people like michael angelo people like leonardo da vinci renaissance has stepped in people are trying to question this authority of religion and this and darwin and darwin will come afterwards but people people are actually questioning this authority of god and this whole idea of creation people like these these artists these painters now they are trying to radicalize this whole idea of work they are working for monarchs they are working for kings but not just for money they are working also to find a certain kind of fulfillment so when leonardo da vinci goes to charles charles one's palace and and builds the entire ceiling he does not do that merely for money or money which for adam's case was a particular end now end end is so the definition has changed slightly okay now let's move further there is somebody called martin luther the founder of protestantism he just switches the game he says and i'm quoting he says that it's not about it's not about i'm not quoting it's not about what you have been commanded to do work is not about a particular end work is also in milking the cow work is also in what a a, a cobbler does work in work is inherent work is immanent and you have to work for the sake of it so the idea has got reversed then marx come on 700 centuries later marx says that the, the only sole <coughs> problem with capitalism is not that the labors are not paid well not anything else but the work that the labors have to do is very boring very alienating right the work a work a laborer is standing the entire day and what the person is doing that the ramp is that the, the boxes come in front of him and all all he has to do is just tie ribbons 5000 boxes one day just tie ribbons marx says work is very boring work has to be a means to not just to earn your livelihood but also to find meaning right and now in these three people michael angelo leonardo da vinci these three sets right i have tried to i have made a long sweep but still so this was one set god christian doctrine 
another set was of St. Augustine where, where one particular idea of work was prevalent. The other set comprises of artists, creative people who, have, who are looking at the idea of work, Martin Luther, Marx. And they are saying, no, no, work is not just about earning livelihood. It's also about trying to find out meaning in life. It's also about creativity. So this another idea steps in. Now we are sitting today in 21st century and we are face to face with both these ideas of work, both these perspectives upon work. And at, at this note, I want to ask you, right? I want to ask you a couple of questions, keeping in context the, the, the large, the, the quick recap that I've done of this idea of work. So interestingly, when I Googled the meaning of work, these are the three meanings that I found out and they're very interesting. Exertion or effort directed to produce or accomplish something accomplish something a job or activity that you do regularly especially in order to earn money a physical or mental effort or activity directed towards the production or accomplishment of something in all the three definitions no nowhere are we talking about the process in all the three definitions we are talking about the end so i am throwing up certain questions to you the first question is what is work is work one of these two definitions or is work something else entirely what is work does one does one today a man of 21st century has the potential to be creative in the work we all know the kind of pro professions that are prevalent people are doing people are working in bpos zero creativity there's no scope for creativity creativity people are security guards no scope of creativity people are delivering pizzas and stuff there's no scope of creativity at all so if work is dual earning livelihood plus finding meaning. Is there a possibility in today's world that one can actualize this ideal, also earn money, also earn livelihood and at the same time find some meaning in it? Question number one, what is work? Is this, is this one of these two definitions or something else entirely? And if work is one of these two definitions, then is there a possibility with today's man that one can sit, look around, and find a profession where both these ideals can be clubbed together. You can also work for an end, earn money, earn livelihood, and also enjoy the process. Right? These two questions that I want to throw up to you and then we will move on. See a few fundamentals. You have started off by saying that there are two prevalent ideas with respect to work. The first is that work is just a means <coughs> to secure a salary or a position, a livelihood. The second is the artist's view or the painter's view that it is a, not only the salary that counts but fulfillment is important. You know, whenever you come across two contrasting ideas and you have given me what look like two contrasting ideas Whenever you come across two contrasting ideas, you should understand there is no contrast at all. Because an idea is an idea. No idea can be the opposite of another idea. All ideas depend on each other and support each other. Hmm? All ideas are dualistic in nature. You see, one man says work is a means to gain money. The other man says work is a means to gain fulfillment. And you tout these two as two opposite things seriously. But that is what we have today, right? When one 
thing fails we present another thing as a substitute when one idea shows up as inadequate all that we can offer is another idea what are these two people doing the first is saying work in order to get money the other man is saying work in order to get fulfillment but both are united in their self assessment both are saying that we are deficient one is saying i am deficient because i need money the other is saying i am deficient because i need fulfillment now how is the demand for fulfillment any more sublime or advanced or respectable than the demand for hardcore material money don't you see that both are saying essentially the same thing in fact that is the reason why the second man who is seeking fulfillment will never be able to convince the first man the first man will say your fulfillment lies in some abstract achievement when you look at your painting hmm your heart really swells up and you call it fulfillment my fulfillment lies in more tangible achievement when i look at my bank account my heart swells up what painting is to your my your mind my bank statement is to my mind who are you to dictate that a painting is more pious than a bank statement who are you to dictate that and the second man will hardly have an answer so we will have to broaden the scope of this discussion beyond what you have presented hmm it is not about looking at these two things we will have to start from scratch right work knowledge punishment ignorance add fulfillment to that list work knowledge punishment ignorance fulfillment what is the relation between these are they different are they one are they merely interrelated one thing we would all agree on whatever you call as work involves some kind of a movement by the organism either a mental movement of thoughts or a physical movement of limbs and labor does it not yes all right so work firstly involves movement hmm without movement we cannot say work is happening movement has to happen somewhere only then do you say that work is happening now where does this movement come from what is the quality of this movement as i say something to you movement has happened hmm? my vocal cords have moved a wave have moved wave has progressed from here to your ear drums things have moved right material has moved
from where is this movement coming what is the quality of this movement <coughs> what is the quality of this movement there is a particular movement that happens because i want something i want something very central very essential i perceive myself to be lacking in it and so the movement is happening then why would the movement happen the movement would happen in order to get that essential thing and there is a movement that happens because i have something both give rise to movement <coughs> there is a movement that happens there is an action that happens because i feel i lack something hmm? the starting point is a feeling of and there is a movement that happens because i feel that i complete have something right no any kind of action from can happen from either of these beginnings let's call these beginnings as origins so there are two possible origins one i do not have it so let me exert myself to to what's happening get it the second origin is i already have it now in the sheer joy of having it let me move i have it now let me move now beyond this there is no real distinction you cannot label a particular kind of work as coming from this origin or that origin one can work for money from the origin of fullness now that sounds paradoxical to the conditioned mind conditioned mind says if you feel already full then why are you working for money and many moral people would raise objections they would say no 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 the one who is already full is in a state of moksha or samadhi and he will no more need money so why would he work for money not really so and from the origin of hollowness of incompleteness one can work in the service of so called god or salvation and again the moral mind the ignorant mind would look at this work and say you know this man is really a spiritual man a realized man see he is working towards god what you would not realize is that he is working towards god from a totally wrong origin hmm? and when i say wrong i am not making a value judgment i am presenting a fact we'll take more of that a little later why the second origin is really wrong hmm? understand this very clearly you could be very very full 
and yet your action could have all the signs marks and labels of what has been traditionally thought to be the actions of an ignorant being being totally full you can still be angry for a bowl of sugar it's all right being totally full you can still chase someone for sex it is all right yes of course the dumb and ignorant eye looking at this happening would say that this person is a hypocrite he could not be internally full had he been internally full how could he have been chasing sex see don't construe my statements to mean that being internally full you must do all these things i just want to strike at a few stereotypes that's why i must talk of them fact is we all face paradoxes paradoxes don't exist have you ever seen two facts fighting with each other imaginations fight with each other facts never fight with each other facts always support each other have you ever seen facts in disagreement with each other but our life is full of disagreements what does that prove we do not live in facts facts only complement support and complete each other so that is why we must strike down a few things as not being factual okay. hmm what happens is you 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 look at a so called material man and why do you call him a material man because he is outwardly material because he is outwardly material and then if somehow life presents you with evidence that he has a deep inner calm within then what do you have in front of you a paradox now paradox cannot exist it only means that you are living in imaginations you cannot reconcile these two things right that how can a man who seems to be chasing desires outwardly be inwardly settled composed and full and you say no this is not possible rationality does not support it it does not support it but it is possible provided as we said we strike at these stereotypes so this whole great confusion on work stands resolved and the resolution is so simple that the question seems a little stupid there was no confusion at all hmm only confusions are prolonged elongated solutions are simple all that matters is where you are coming from what is your self concept what is your self assessment do you have any self clarity clear of who you are it becomes irrelevant what you are doing why focus so much on the doing on the work do whatever you want to 
हु हैज द अथॉरिटी टू जज यू हु हैज द अथॉरिटी टू जज यू जस्ट एंड श्योर दैट यू आर सिटिंग एट द राइट प्लेस दैट योर सेंटर इज गुड वॉट वुड यू सिटिंग on that center is an irrelevant question because what you do will be dictated by the demands of the time and times keep changing times keep changing not only from century to century or millennia to millennia or decade to decade but they are changing every moment so every moment would be the opportunity for a fresh action we cannot enlist all the possible actions we cannot so what would be done is an irrelevant question to ask and an impossible question to answer what would be done only you can know only you can know but what i can say is who will do it and one must be able to ask the right questions in life answers don't matter never ask what to do ask who is doing it hmm now the thing about why does the second origin exist at all why is man subjected to the punishment of ignorance what is ignorance but sir if you allow me before you step step into this uh, as i laid out two contrasting points and i said that in one case you work for a, towards a particular end and in the other case you work for the work itself and you began by saying that these two are not really contrasted to each other towards each other but they are one and then you you try to radicalize this whole idea of work you said that it's not about the external it's about the internal it's not about the work it's not about the work. it's about from where the work is coming and you again created two sectors of that space from where the work is coming so even these two sectors one of <coughs> discontentment deficit deficiency and the other of fulfillment so can one not say that even these two sectors are like the other two sectors that are presented and even th- these two are apparently contrasted to each other they are also one no they are not contrasted to each other because there are no two sectors to really contrast in this case in this case when we are saying one of them is false it really means there is only one but the other also exists in fact the other is that which is pre- present for whom hmm. when you say existence for whom does this second origin the origin of ignorance and incompleteness exist we are addressing that now so we are not told why adam and eve were created in the first place all right we are told how they were corrupted but we are never told why they were created so you can never really go to the absolute beginning of the story because at the absolute beginning of the story lies god and god cannot be known by definition otherwise we'll have to call him and make him sit on this chair and ask him the first question that you tell us first of all why did you begin the whole story we will call the serpent later 
the serpent only corrupted what you created first. And why did you create products that were corruptible? If you are God, then your creation should be godly. How are you creating these corruptible products? Hmm? No, it, it's... Import goes beyond the joke. So the imperfection comes from the perfect source. Remember this. Don't go beyond that. The correctable Adam and Eve are coming from the perfect creator. Now do you see why falseness does not really exist? Yet to you it seems like existing. Mm -hmm. You reconcile these two things. First, perfection can only give rise to perfection. Second, perfection looks like giving rise to corruption. But which of these is the more irrefutable thing? The more irrefutable thing is that the creativity of the creator carries all the qualities of the creator. If Adam and Eve are the creativity of the creator, then they cannot be anything but godly. But to you, they look unholy, ungodly, corrupted. So all that appears to be unholy, ungodly, corrupted coming from the second center is actually false. It just appears unholy. It is not. Because it is coming from God. Or do you want to say that a perfect creator commits mistakes? Do you want to say that? And one can also argue the other way around. One can say that since the creation is imperfect, this can also, if one not begins with the assumption that the perfect creation, creator leads to perfection, one can say that <coughs> the creation is imperfect. So the creator is also imperfect. Of but course. But that would again be, a, I mean, a loop. Then no, it would not be a loop. In fact, it is a very good statement to make that whatever looks like imperfect comes from an imperfect source. And that imperfect source cannot be God. It can only be your own mind. So whenever you look at any imperfection, you must know you are creating it. Kindly spare God. God is not creating it. Your own argument is a great argument of theism. You wanted to probably prove that God is imperfect. But you have inadvertently proven that whatever looks like imperfect has no role of God in it. Because God is You know, what we are talking of is a concept driven by faith. All this God business. Otherwise, you cannot really go ahead and prove any of this thing about perfection or imperfection. Without faith, it is not possible. Think it. So, what looks like imperfect also comes from the perfect. What looks like imperfect also comes from the perfect. That is why it is variously said that the truth shines even in its own absence. If it looks like truth, it is truth. If it looks like false, it is still truth. Because truth is all that there is. But man wants to assert the false also. And one of the ways of asserting the false <coughs> is to fight the false. In fighting the false, you are acting as if the false really exists. 
And when you are fighting the false, what are you doing? You are saying there exists a godless space. There exists a certain falseness and I have been interested with fighting it. So who am I? I am God's savior. God could not help himself. Now I am coming to help him. Hmm? The second center appears second because you do not see the unity between the first and second because you do not see the unity between the creator and the creation that will now bring us to how this myth that there does exist a separation get propagated and strengthened. Hmm? Firstly, we said that there are actually no two centers. Now we are trying to see how the second center actually becomes a dominant thought in our minds. When the second center becomes a dominant thought, then you want to work. Then you say there is something wrong with the world and me and I need to correct it through work. You see, go back to your very scriptures and when you are told that what is happening is a separation from God, then obviously it becomes dominant on your mind that this separation needs to be reduced. And most scriptures have done this. They have repeatedly told you that your life as a human being is some kind of a departure from Godhood. They've also kept the door, the option to return open. Now that you have been separated, you can do such and such things to come back to God. And that is called as heaven. Hmm? Attainment of heaven, liberation, nirvana, moksha, whatever. But they have all asserted that you have been separated. Now when you have been separated and that is drilled into the child's mind since a young age, what else is he going to do? He is going to place totally needless value upon work. Now he will work. Are you seeing what is happening? Now mother will tell him, you are not alright and he will believe. Mm -hmm. Now neighbors will tell him, your grades are inferior compared to grades of somebody else and he will believe. Now teachers will tell him, you need to become a responsible citizen and he will believe. Now all this becoming thing will come into the picture. I need to become. Actually, the whole becoming desire is just a desire to return to the God source. But returning becomes relevant only when you have been first convinced that you have strayed away. Who convinces you that you have been pushed out of heaven in the first place. It begins with the scriptures and it is carried forward by the various forces in the family, society and the classroom. 
Are you getting it? That is why it is extremely important that someone must arise and say that it is of much greater importance to keep asserting that God created man in his own image. And that too has been said but not been given due importance and not been interpreted rightly. God's image will be God himself. But man has been so afraid to declare his Godhood that he starts worshipping some God outside of himself. Till the time you believe that you are just an imperfect creation of a perfect source, your life will be mired in suffering. Which you would term as work. Which you would term as work. You are trying to cure yourself of a disease which you do not have. You know, it is far easier to convince a man that he is a depraved being. A misfit not worth living. But to convince somebody of the godliness in him is almost impossible. That is the point to which we have been brought by the misinterpretation of the scriptures and an education system that focuses so much on becoming. You see in India, the highest word that the Vedic literature has uttered is Aham Brahmasmi. Hmm? And that has been recognized as one of the great utterances, Mahavakyas. But still, in popular culture, if someone rises up and says, I indeed am Brahma, he would probably be lynched. And if he is not lynched, he would be taken as extremely arrogant. It would be taken as a declaration of the ego. Which it might indeed be. We are not denying that. 99% of the times it would be from the false center that you would rise up and claim that you are God. But this cynicism is so... Has, has got such deep, deep roots in our minds that we rule out the possibility. We entirely closed the possibility. It's not even a possibility, it's the reality. What do you mean by possibility? Possibilities deal in probabilities. Here the probability is one. It is not the possibility, it is the present reality of which there is no substitute. You and I sitting and talking to each other here is God talking to himself. But you will be so shy of saying that or admitting that. Look at the way you are smiling. This is the only thing that brings you to this nervous smile. You know, God talking to himself. Too much for my little ego to bear. When you have convinced man of his littleness, is it any wonder that now he behaves in a petty man manner? When you have totally convinced man of his pettiness, how else will he behave? And then you use his behavior as a proof of his pettiness. 
what rubbish is this from where is this behavior coming from where is this behavior coming you know please understand when what happens when you take a kid to the temple or a church or a mosque wherever you say that is god right hmm especially if it's a temple carrying a deity you say god is there there so if god is there then surely he is not godly here, here. because that is what we see in this material world if something is there then it cannot be here. that is the very definition of something being there there not here hmm? you say keep your sandals outside the temple premises leave them there now for sure you are teaching the kid the where you left your sandals god is not there now you may keep lecturing him on the omni presence of god he is never really going to take you seriously he has taken his lesson where i keep my sandals god is not there what is the point now in telling him that god is everywhere where is god they are in the sanctum sanctorum not outside it we have created a godless world by saying that god created this world we have pushed god out of this world you need a clear understanding that god really did not create anything outside of himself that the creation is not at all different from the creator that you do not really need temples because every bit every point is a temple if you need a temple then you need work to go to the temple do you understand this is what work is where i am a temple is not really there so i need to do something to reach a temple now that is work a feeling of incompleteness a feeling of the greatest not being with you so you have to then do something hmm your own doership comes into question now you have to do something to reach there now becoming and a future become important because all doing takes time so it will happen only in the future and the more you have a people who believe in god being different from his creation the more that society will be inclined towards work and that is the reason probably for the machine like productivities of the western nations the concept of sin has been so deeply implanted in the mind of their populations that they cannot get over it for them just being born is sin so all their life all they are doing is repentance and they are repenting by working hard and harder and harder and producing things and destroying the planet along with their own lives you 
you have convinced them totally of the virtue of work which cannot be done without firstly convincing them of their own worthlessness I am so worthless that I need to somehow become and prove worthy of just existing but even in cultures where this idea of original sin has not existed even these cultures have not done anything different they have done in fact the opposite they have gone into indifference like the culture we live in we so the idea of original sin according to me does not exist but still people here have become indifferent towards work they are not working because this this drive does not exist to repent to go back i'm sure you must be very careful while looking at things the original sin idea very much is prevalent here okay in india in east everywhere you see wherever there would be thought wherever there would be an idea an idea related to anything an idea related to a stone or related to a car a machine a man a woman a picture anything wherever there is an idea that idea is always related to original sin in fact ideation itself is the original sin oh. you will have to you know why do you ideate why why do you need to have ideas to arrive at a particular conclusion and why do you need that why do you need that because there is a lack of clarity in the mind but of course right so the perfect has given rise to lack of clarity hmm and that is the original sin that is the original sin so never say that in india we don't have the idea of original sin you have other ideas and any idea the idea of a departure from any idea any idea you have other ideas here so you, you do to... have the idea of returning back to god or don't you have that what else is moksha what else is moksha and what are you returning to if you never departed hmm. all your scriptures repeatedly talk of moksha hmm. and that it is the highest attainable what do you mean by attaining moksha so the fact is if you really read the scriptures they are not saying that moksha is to be attained they are simply saying that samadhi is your swabhav that it is what is it is already there but in the common culture it is taken as an attainable as a purusharth that this is what man must get Hmm? Moksh. Now, if you have to get moksh, then what do you have now? The moksh is something that you will get in the future. So, surely, what do you have now? Non-moksh. Some non-moksh kind of stuff, hmm? which is a punishment. So, you see how this ideation business is related to punishment. and do you see how all of this is just knowledge okay right do you see this and do you also see how the societies that are so productive are also very knowledgeable do you see a relationship can you look at the germans or the japanese hmm of knowledge i'm pretty sure number of patents per 1000 population would be among the highest in these countries they generate so much of knowledge what is this thirst for knowledge that knowledge has been taken as a god it's an indisputable ideal knowledge must be generated i want to question that 
I want to severely criticize that. Why do you need knowledge? And don't you see that this race after knowledge is the central cause of all your misery and the destruction that you are bringing yourself to? <coughs> you say you are knowledgeable, but you don't even understand that all knowledge is false. Knowledge is nothing but the building up of concept based on another concept. All knowledge proceeds through definitions and where do definitions come from? Are definitions an absolute or are they all man-made? For anything to be absolute, it must be based on something absolute. But you define this thing to be that thing and that thing to be that thing. And then you proceed on that and then you claim I am very knowledgeable and what do you use that so-called knowledge for? To play around with material, like kids. Hmm? And you feel so happy when you are able to make a new toy. You call that great discovery or great invention. And you give these kids Nobel Prizes. Our entire consciousness is built around these things. The original sin, knowledge, productivity, punishment. And I also said illusion. I want to say knowledge is ignorance. Ignorance is not the absence of knowledge. Ignorance is the dominance of knowledge. When the Western mind says ignorance, all it means is lack of knowledge. It doesn't understand that ignorance is being knowledgeable. When you have knowledge, that is ignorance. It seems so absurd. To the knowledgeable mind. To the knowledgeable mind. To the knowledgeable mind. So you have basically radicalized the entire idea of the work. So work is not internal, external. So work is not what you do, but from where is it? It is coming. You have tried to create uh, two, but still not two spaces. The Thus, and you are saying that this discontentment, this lack of, uh, this greed for fulfillment, this exists because we have been conditioned to believe so, otherwise it is not real at all. Thus, the idea of the original sin, something with which I began my presentation, they don't exist at all. So this whole contrast between you see and show, we all know that inferiority will lead to violence and all other kinds of sicknesses. Don't we know that? The fundamental inferiority to which we have been subjected is that man is inferior to God. And we have been told that this inferiority is absolute and cannot be bridged. All your life, you are working just to get rid of this fundamental inferiority. That is what can also be called as the fundamental incompleteness or the original sin. Until man comes to see that he is one with God and in no way smaller, He will continue to have this stupid way of working. You are in a sense competing with God. You are always measuring God. You know I am inferior, I need to reach there. So how high is God? I need to reach there. 
and that's a totally ungodly act because God never measures, measures himself. <coughs> now you can see it very clearly and since this whole thing has taken such deep roots in our unconscious that that A, we have become completely aware, unaware of this conditioning and B, very interestingly, we are trying to bridge it and now how does this attempt happening in the modern world so that God who was the father of Adam that God now that God in today's world is my boss <coughs> so is my boss so the deep con uncon desire of the unconscious is that I have to bridge gap with that God but since I cannot do it I know very unconsciously I, I know it's you are right. stuck between two impossible definitions one God cannot be attained second hmm. I will not rest till I attain God. Together, what do these two mean? First, God by definition is unattainable. That is what your culture has told you. Second, something that arises from within, which again is a product of, at least a semi-product of conditioning. I cannot rest till I get God. So together, what do these two give you? I can never rest. And that is what you have, a restless life. You might be chasing anything. You might be chasing a productivity target. Right. You might be chasing a new car. You might be chasing a bigger property. But you must realize that essentially all you are doing is trying to wash your original sin. You are chasing God. And by definition, he cannot be changed. Chased? Yeah, and very interestingly, perhaps unknowingly, we have made a very big claim, a giant claim. And you, not I, <laughs> I'm trying to understand it. And so we are saying that this modern society, the premise upon which it, it postulates itself, it says secularism and it's deeply religious in some sense. Religious, not in the sense of religiosity, but in the sense of so when it says you get what I'm trying to say, you see all religion that is these roots, that these roots, these myths are still there. Yeah, of course, these myths they haven't well, died. Of course, they haven't. But then don't equate them with religion. And if you do equate them with religion, then don't give a lot of value to religion. You see what is religion? Right. I mean authoritative doc religion of doctrines and all. That. And, uh, and all of them are man-made. Right. And all of them rest upon the assumption that there is a need to return to the center, mm -hmm. that there is a need to attain God. That's the basic premise of religions. Mm -hmm. hmm? Do religions take you towards God or are they the reason why you feel godless? Is not every religion telling you this is the way to attain God. And you feel grateful. Oh, finally somebody is there to guide me. If you have something right here and somebody guides you towards the same thing there, is he guiding you or misguiding you? If you just look at to little towards yourself you will know that you have the stuff with you but he is saying keep looking there and you will get that stuff there is he guiding you or misguiding you yes. but he is very generously offering his hand and with great authority he is saying, you keep looking there, I know the truth, you will find him there. This is a conspiracy in some way to prevent you from turning inwards. So if I were to summarize whatever we have discussed up till now, I will put it in a nutshell and say that I began by asking you very emphatically, I gave you two definitions of work. I tried and I tried to draw these definitions historically. I told you that one is that you work for a particular end, you work for money, and the other other is that you work for creativity. You you try to work for the process itself, and you are you have entirely radicalized this 
this structural conception of mind and you are saying that it's it's not about what for you are working it's about from where are you working are you working from a feeling of discontentment discont- a feeling of incompleteness or are you working just because out of the sheer joy of fulfillment yeah, i mean everything is anyway moving it is not moving because it is feeling sad hmm? when you look at this right. physical universe right. it is a universe of movement of change but nothing in this universe is moving because it is feeling miserable except man hmm the stars are moving sun is moving moon is moving animals are moving everything is moving nothing is still the pace of movement might be different but nothing is moving to gain fulfillment spiritual salvation man is the only one who is moving because he wants god that only proves that man is the only one who is godless yes some egoists may come and say that only proves that man is the only one who wants god i would say no that proves that man is the only one who firstly feels that he is godless because you want only that which you don't have or are. what comes first the drive or the lack the lack comes first the lack comes first and then you have the drive right so far so good so it's the lack and which is a conditioning which is something an idea that has been planted into our minds which is making us work and work like madmen go into any in every profession that is that is promising us that it can bridge that primordial gap right it is this lack but when i when i look at it sociologically so you are saying that uh work is happening because there is lack and and we have to agree upon this fact that it is it is a reality in the world sociological world in the society that people are working mainly because they feel discontent because they they are they don't i mean there is no fulfillment in their hearts so the first case is is a rare, i mean is a rare thing right they were working mainly because they don't feel fulfilled so according to this conception of ours they cannot attain fulfillment of course by working so it's not it's not a matter of what which profession you choose yes. of course it is not very well a matter said. of which profession you choose wonderfully so said. this the co- the last question that i have i mean which i thought would be a crucial question in this discussion that which marks also i mean raises i mean so in in a community gathering the 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 mode of production the means of production would change the kind of works professions you do would change radically right so it's not about what you are doing whether you doing this kind of work or that do kind of this or do that how does it matter what it does matter like you look at the face of a security watch security guard you look at the face face of you, you don't like no. his face don't do that you have complete freedom when it doesn't matter what you do it means you have complete freedom to do anything because it doesn't matter Hmm. but it matters to the security guard i mean if he leaves his he job can, he can leave his job no he leave he won't be able to earn his livelihood his, his family would i mean staff i mean so i'm saying i'm saying being that he, what he is hmm. he cannot leave his job but he is what he is and he cannot leave the job so what you know he is what he is hmm. is his self belief not an absolute truth it is his self concept just because you know don't be taken in by a man's show of confidence just because he says a few things in a very personal and intimate way do not think that those things are coming from him the security guard might say it is my life it is my wife and i have 10 kids and i have a house to run and i have this and that and one must take care of his responsibilities and i have my old parents to take care of hmm and i have to follow and there is i have to follow that you have to clearly see that all of this is just ideation was the guard born with these thoughts 
surely he was not but currently he is living in that loop and the, the person sees no way out at all so what is an idea go back to that discussion what is an idea which is based upon another idea he said no he said an idea is something which you have because you want fulfillment hmm and when you say you want fulfillment what you are saying is that the perfect is giving rise to imperfection again that same old mistake whatever that security guard is saying about himself is not his it has been put in his mind by various forces now he has internalized it so deeply that it appears that it is his identity that it is coming from within him it is not coming from within him it's not him at all he has actually no relationship with his wife he does not know anybody so don't you have anything to so next step don't you have anything to say about this whole game upon which upon which uh, this whole game of uh, uh, injecting ideas into people's mind conditioning them and so so the market of today today's market forces they realize that man is ha, i mean that they realize that we have injected a certain idea of lack in his mind they are quite aware of that that old myth that god so so and the man is imperfect and they are pouncing upon they are working upon this incompleteness this feeling of incompleteness and hence as a result i mean all these different professions which are completely non creative mechanical are coming up so don't you have to say about this and i mean anything about this that the kinds of works that are prevalent there is no, no rasa know. in them you know <coughs> there is no rush even in the idea that you are not god so you have to go back to it do not blame the market forces of today the market forces of today are not coming from nowhere they are coming from the entire stream of thought of mankind hmm they are coming from the entire stream of thought is there any juice in first of all thinking that you are a stupid lousy thing who has been thrown into a hostile world and who is condemned to always remain imperfect what what ras do you see in this idea and when this idea came there was really no capitalism or market driven economy hmm so don't really blame any ism blame ideation itself this ism or that ism all of them are ideas claiming to provide man with fulfillment what does an ideology any ideology eventually promise fulfillment it may differ in the means the ends its entire outlook the way it models the universe but ultimately it promises fulfillment even the definition of fulfillment might be different from in one ideology from the other yet they all offer their own varieties of fulfillment we you want a way out the way out is to just keep seeing that anything that tells you that there is something really really wrong with you anything that gives you a dream anything that gives you a destination is false and you will have to refrain from calling these your dreams and your destinations and your goals and your targets they are not yours they are being artificially laid upon you 
Why should you allow that to happen? Hmm? So, it's quite possible that apparently at the external level the work you are doing is very mechanical, non-creative but you might be doing it with joy it's quite it's very much possible so it's not about the work that you are doing not at all and the vice versa the opposite also you true. know seeking fulfillment through work is stupid pitiable are those people who say that you know this particular work is my passion but the common sill of these people somebody comes and says you know I I am a folk singer and I love my work. It's like saying I love my medicine when I'm not even sick. I love my medicine when I'm not even sick. It doesn't matter which brand of medicine you are using. But how can somebody love his work? Yes, you can be love personified. And then any work is all right. Whatever you would be doing, you would bring the quality of love to it. But that quality would not be provided by the work. You are saying that love is located outside of you and work will bring it to you. It's foolhardy. Absolutely foolhardy. And you have managers and bosses saying you must love your work. The fellow has no love in his heart. How can there be love in the work? He does not love his wife, his kids, the dogs, the goats, the elephants, the rivers. He has never loved anything. Now you are saying love with the work. Whom are we fooling? So, you should be able to see through the stupidity of all this thing. I really love technology. Oh, nerds and geeks. And he's sitting the entire day in front of his system and you know, mine is a startup and I'm working towards a new patent. And he's, he's madly in love with this work. Yeah, you read his mind. The bugger is afraid of roaming into the wild. He is actually hiding his face in front of the screen. That's all. Can't go anywhere else. Scared of the wife, scared of the neighbors, scared of the universe, scared of existence itself, scared of his own minds and thoughts. What does he do? Sit in front of the system and... But as a face saving device he says, I love my work. Yeah, I love my poison. I love my medicine. When? I am not even sick. Hmm? I mean, this is... If when, with this understanding, I mean, if you are saying that it that it a it's not in the work, and b one and all the work <coughs> are one and the same, a that it's not in the work, what what which work you do, and b that all all the works are one and the same. One thing happens instantly. Is that the whole hierarchy of works that the society ah, has collapses. created? Hmm. You just collapse it in one moment. Of course. You say that the cobbler is, I mean, as good as the CEO and you're saying something momentous. And I'm not saying out this out of moral virtue. Not at all. I'm saying this as a fact. As a fact. And I'm not even saying that they are the same. I'm saying the CEO might be worse than the cobbler if he's working from the second center. Not what you are doing, but from where you are doing of it. Of course. Are you doing it from a feeling of, of complete completeness, joy, or from a, a certain lack? So, if 
you need to have an objective that objective needs to be set your center straight not to choose the right work but to choose the right center you know if you really want to have a life work that life work cannot be about choosing the right work externally but about choosing the right center internally hmm? am i choosing the right center choose the right center and then the right center itself will suggest to you rather dictate the right work and can this right center be not founded by working can you not no no there is no way no you cannot come within you from outside you cannot leap outside of you to come back to yourself is work merely material i mean thinking by definition by definition because work involves happening happening means space and time space and time is material yes so this hierarchy collapses and it, it collapses it totally really collapses bad. totally collapses if you need really need to have something to do in life hmm. then do find your real center that is what is worth doing oh wow and what we are in i mean doing is we are doing the exact opposite you are doing exactly we are finding the work and then which suits your existing center when you talk of doing you are finding work which suits your existing center whereas the only work worth doing is finding the right center find the right center and the right center will find the right work for you and that right work will be as mischievous and dynamic and child like as the right center hmm? innocent in fact fickle in some way it can continue with one thing for years and years or it can say i want to change with the right center whatever work you choose will be right that is what i call as complete freedom see please understand complete freedom does not mean randomness complete freedom does not mean a throw of dice when we have said that all works are the same what we have said is that you have complete freedom in choosing this or that which does not mean randomness which means that there is nothing that bars you out of your understanding from the right center all kinds of works are possible it doesn't mean that if you are working as a butcher that is the same as working as a writer when you shift centers there is a great possibility that the work would also change if you are working as a killer as a slayer of animals and you discover your real origin then it is highly unlikely that you would continue in the same profession your profession will change but what would you change it to we do not know you can you may pick up obscure works you may obscure. create something new you so create something. a kabir can be a weaver or you may just retire i don't know what to do. <laughs> why must one keep doing so because you anyway do anything when you feel the lack i don't feel it anymore you don't feel it anymore and one day if i find that i am totally short of food or clothes okay i may just again pick up my worksman clothes and go out to work it's okay i am not to 
rigid about retirement either hmm. i can any time revoke my retirement there are no ideals when you are at the right center today you can declare i am retiring hmm five days later you can say no if the fellow comes and says but you said you were retiring you say i said that five days back why are you living in five days back only come back to today you know that is the thing with living from the right heart you don't face contradictions you are not confused whereas the man who is morality living with the burden of sin faces contradictions at every step and he cannot reconcile them he either accuses himself of foolishness or accuses others of hypocrisy you don't see any contradictions going left you can start walking right all of a sudden for no reason and there's no contradiction in it you can go out for a walk and sleep in the garden and there's no contradiction here you can go out because it's time for a fight then you can return with that man as a friend and there is no contradiction here but if you are operating from the second center then you will say no but he was supposed to be the enemy you should have subjugated him right why did you hug him and this is a common phenomenon when certain political ministers of a party when they do not criticize the other minister i mean there's a entire fuss in the party why do you not because i mean it seems like a contradiction and you can criticize somebody and be his admirer at the same time that is what is meant by complete freedom So the then you can never say that I belong to a particular profession. Then this whole thing about division of labor becomes nonsensical. You cannot carry this identity. Who am I, a cobbler? Yeah. Now why am I not parallelly a gardener, a lover, a fighter, and an astronaut? Why not? Why not? And with all these together, of course, I have to be a superman. <laughs> so add that to the list. Hmm. So the only thing that has just instantly popped up out of this discussion is that. if we have somebody who is doubly stuck somebody who is a working from the wrong center that we discussed who is working from a feeling of discontent lack lack and is also caught up in a kind of a work which has no scope of creativity at all right there are works which are completely dull so this person is completely completely stuck doubly stuck so the only suggestion the only tip that we have for them is that firstly do not try, try to change the work that would never help right so it's not about what you are doing it's about from where you are doing if you change the center the work would automatically change if the work may not change, change or may not change it would change if it must change it may not change on it the quality of, of your work hmm. the, the the way you engage with that work it the would quality of engagement would change, would change. Oh. drastically drastically 
in fact nothing can be said about what you would do and nothing must be said because this inclination to determine what I would do comes from an inner insecurity. Why should I determine what I would do tomorrow? Tomorrow I could be a school teacher, a paraglider, a swimmer or a cook. Why should I even try to determine what I would be tomorrow? My only responsibility is to determine whether I am at the right center. And then the center would determine the work for me. Let the center determine. See, sir, one thing that I can see very clearly is now I'm looking, reflecting upon, I'm recalling uh, the way I brought forward this topic. I give, I put, I posited it in a historical context. Now, now currently it seems to me that that the worthwhile question is not. What is work? What what are the things one should work for? The worthwhile question is how does one engage with this fact that this history is sitting in your head? Because what has come up is what has come up is that it's not about what you are doing. It's not about it's not about anything. I mean anything concrete as such. It's about the fact that certain things have been injected in your mind like this biblical myth of Adam and Eve. Something which I thought is substantial. So substantial that it would be the foundation of my of my of entire presentation. And now I can see that it is the main cause which has led to this uh, misreadings of this uh, misreadings of the whole idea of work. So perhaps the last question and something that I would have, I should have begun with, right? So how does one come to terms with i mean this deep unconscious conditioning right i am working because i feel a lack of lack of I'm, i feel a deep lack and that is the reason i am working and it is upon this lack only that the market forces are i mean it is this lack only that they are catering so this deep conditioning how do i come to terms with it how do i make it conscious how do I realize it? How do I so that security guard? How does the security guard sit at one point of time in his life? If you closely look at the flow of this discussion, you will realize the way out. You started by presenting one historical narrative as opposed to another historical narrative. You have to see that history is a continuity because history is man's mind. Mm -hmm. So you will not be able to go past history by seeking refuge in history. One bit of conditioning cannot be a cure for another bit. One idea cannot cure the damage caused by another idea. Conditioning leads to suffering, yet people do not come out of it. Do you know why? Because they do come out of it to re-enter conditioning through another gate. When I suffer, I do come out of where I am suffering. But I enter another room. I enter another flat. One historical solution fails me so what do i go to another historical solution one girlfriend fails me what do i go to another girlfriend one ideology goes bankrupt i flock towards another ideology this is interesting. So feudalism fails me, I go to capitalism. Capitalism fails me, I go to socialism. I go to some ism. I go to some woman. I go to the next thought. I go to the next man-made system. What I do not realize is it is all ultimately coming from here. But if I were to argue like a common man, like in common parlance, I mean, is the outcome only argument? 
that we can give against uh, i mean the fact that no ism has ever worked out the fact that no religion has has ever been able to fulfill mankind's desire is this the only argument is this empirical observation the only argument or we have some other argument also? i have to live in facts any other argument would be imaginary the best possible argument that can be given is a factual argument right you have been trying it since but what the about beginning this? of time but what about this it hasn't worked up till now it will work then when you are going into imaginations because you are talking of will your future then you can be given an imaginary argument because whatever the imaginary argument will be whatever you will come up with in future will just be some kind of a permutation combination of what you have already come up with hmm. when this has not worked how will that work have you ever come up with anything new you have always come up with another idea and the very urge to ideate comes from a feeling of so what will you come up with in the future another idea that idea might be a combination of thousand ideas or whatever because there are anyway no new ideas hmm you can combine them in a seemingly new way but they all emerge from the same false center so don't commit that same mistake of seeking shelter in another idea when all the previous ones fail so this discussion has uh somehow reached has touched points which were i mean never meant to be touched as you said that i'm sure we'll have to begin from scratch and we literally began from scratch and we touched those points that were in my understanding not to be touched or those points that were out of the context so if i were to summarize this discussion which is which seems uh, very digressive but has a has some coherence in it i i said <coughs> work is either <coughs> towards a particular end or for the process itself you countered this assumption this this model of mine and you said that and so it's not about whether you are working for something or whether you are working for the process it's not about the object of your work it's about the subject of work it's about the quality it's it, that it's about the center from which you are working and then we discussed at length about <coughs> the lack the idea of the lack the discontentment and now we have arrived at a point where uh i can i mean i can see at least i can see and i hope that the audience has also been able to see that the whole game about changing professions the whole game about changing isms the whole game about changing ideas would never work is bound to fail because at the very foundation of this game of becoming is the idea that you lack in something and unless we go deep down and check that lack right things won't fix so instead of questioning i mean what is work what is creativity what all professions are the ones that have to be picked in today's society we have to raise more fundamental questions we have to ask who works and whoever works works with what quality of mind so at this point i would like to thank you ashish sand it was really a nice discussion and i hope the audience has been helped welcome thanks a lot